Those two brothers that really started our fight a little over a century ago, they were innovators that spurred a tremendous amount of activity. You think about the number of companies that were out there in the 20s and 30s trying to be able to push the industry forward. But then think about the last 25 years. I challenge you to think about a startup company that has been able to get through all the challenges that the FAA puts in front of it to be able to get an airplane certified. And for those of you that have been in the business before, you know that the type certificate is not the biggest challenge, it's the production certificate. In the last quarter century, a lot of companies have tried, but there's only one that made it. And they didn't make it the easy way. When you look at what Allen and Dale brought to this industry, they said, we're not going to do it. We're going to do composites. Now think about the 1990s. The SR-20 was certified in 1998. We didn't know much about composites then. We didn't know how to lay it up in a production form and actually test it. We did not know what would happen with this intense process to be able to make sure each and every copy of that aircraft was precise. But it didn't stop there. Composites was just the beginning. Allen had a mid-air collision in 1985. And he said, you know what? We're going to put a shoot on this aircraft. We're going to make sure that something catastrophic happens that people can go down safe. And I'm very proud of the fact that as we sit here tonight, there have been 46 air saves and 95 lives saved by coming down to shoot. They all said, you know, somebody's sitting in the back seat of the aircraft, they need to know where they are. They need to have a display right in front of them. And both Al and Dale said, what is the customer want out there? At that time, we were all working on desktops. We had a computer screen in front of us. So they said, let's give it to them. But let's give it to them in color. Let's give a screen on the MFD that the folks in the back seat can know where they are. But let's have a moving map so they know where their position is. We don't have to do the mental gymnastics of always knowing where our position is in the weather and at night. And oh, by the way, let's pump in weather so people actually can go and avoid thunderstorms and save more lives. But actually, the biggest accomplishment by putting in this glass panel technology is absolutely reducing by over 50% the number of accidents we have to control flight into terrain. We can't count those numbers of bodies that have been saved because Cirrus started that revolution, that glass panel revolution that allowed our terrain awareness to be so prominent that right now the industry has passed over that area to be able to focus hard on improvement because it has been reduced so dramatically and we go on to other things that we want to attack as challenges. And Cirrus through the leadership of Dale and Allen, has been able to pioneer each and every one of those. Loss of control is the biggest, uh, our biggest accident driver. What do they do? They institute envelope protection so that the autopilot can actually go and do some things and kick back and push back on a pilot if he has an excessive banking. They've introduced synthetic vision. And I proudly fly a Cirrus quite often. And I'll tell you, find an instrument approach for those of you that haven't done it before. What these guys brought to the industry, you just put the velocity vector on the end of the runway, you forget about ever deviating off the course when you're flying an ILS. It's that good. And being a former military aviator, the guys that I know that are flying F-22 Raptors and F-35 still don't have the same type of advanced technology that we have in this aircraft today. These two innovators revolutionized this industry. And all along the way, they have these tremendous lives being partners with them, Sarah and Patty, all throughout this journey, taking care of the kids, a mom and dad that's supportive, letting these two guys fly and land in their front yard and start up a company, reviewing a business plan, and all of a sudden letting them start in Baraboo. And Baraboo, Wisconsin, to this day, regrets the fact 
the day that they kicked him out of there and said, no, you guys are causing too much traffic at our local airport. Get out of here. And look what they created. Do you know that in 1999, that first year after they got their production certificate on the SR-20, they produced nine aircraft. In 2006, seven years later, 721 aircraft. That is truly phenomenal. And as each and every new development that goes into the Cirrus Marshall along, they were ready for the next thing. Together, they said, we have a vision to be able to produce a single engine jet. Let's go and give the customer the reliability of German technology in a very affordable and fuel efficient manner. And today, Dale and Cirrus continue on that path. At the same time, Dale has been very active with NASA in leading the General Aviation Engineering Team, as Alan has gone off and pursued an interest in another very important part of the market, in turboprops, where there's a sweet spot where size and speed matters. So both of these gentlemen continue to innovate to this day. And it's just a, a pleasure for me to be able to recognize two brothers that in the grace of the aviation traditions, the Wright brothers, just follow in their footsteps and continue. And I know they'll do that till the day they have to hang up that, those spurs and turn in that, that certificate. So let's roll the film and learn a little bit more about the Allen. Nick Looney presents our biography of Alan and Dale Meyer. We eagerly note the words of wisdom shared by successful trailblazers and visionaries. Their insights serve as signposts and offer inspiration and motivation to those that follow. All of us can benefit from pondering such profound statements. Add to them this quote, often shared by the designers and founders of Sears Aircraft, the brothers Alan and Dale Gladmire. You have to be dumb enough to start and smart enough to finish. Alan and Dale Gladmire were second and third sons of Larry and Carol Gladmire. Alan was born on October 6, 1958, in St. Paul, Minneapolis, with Dale joining the family on July 2, 1961, in Rockford, Illinois. A difficult child, Alan spent most of his first two years crying, unless either held by his mother or watching airplanes. As the kids grew, the three brothers built model airplanes, watched aircraft movies such as 12 o'clock high, and continued to dream. By the time high school in DeKalb, Illinois rolled around, Alan was visiting the local airport daily just to watch airplanes and to talk with pilots. When Alan was a high school junior, he joined the Civil Air Patrol, where flying lessons were become ago. Shortly after graduating in 1976, Alan was a licensed pilot. Naturally, his high school friends were skeptical of his statements about starting a company to design and manufacture aircraft. A few years later, the brothers bought a 1947 Cessna 140, in which Dale began his flight training at age 15. Imagine having an airplane before your first car. Following high school, Alan attended Ripon College, graduating in 1980 with degrees in physics and economics. The summer before his graduation, the brothers discovered a wrecked 1960 Champion 7GC, which appeared to be a quick rebuild project. Like any good learning experience, their short project ended up taking two and a half years. The fall of 1979, while Alan was still a senior in college, he began the design for what became the Cirrus VK-30. Alan's interest in composites and laminar flow aerodynamics was shelving. As the next step in gaining experience, the brothers decided to build an airplane for a kit. While attending the 1980 EAA fly-in at Oshkosh, they bought a glass air kit. As part of the deal, Alan and Dale's parents required them to write a business plan, explaining how building the glass air was necessary for their own business future. Dale graduated from the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point in December of 1983, with degrees in business administration with finance emphasis and in economics. The last heir graduated from the family barn to the sky that following spring. During this time, discussions of aircraft design and business futures 
continued with the forming of what became Cirrus Design Corporation. Their first design, the K30, was a five-seat composite piston pusher prop craft with conventional wings and tail, which became the first kit aircraft featured on the cover of Aviation Week and Space Technology in January 1990. With their sights set on FAA certification, Cirrus left Wisconsin in 1994 for Duluth, Minnesota. There, the brothers were better able to focus on a different design, known as the SR-20, one intended to redefine aircraft comfort, safety, ease of operation, and performance. Building the team that achieved FAA certification was part of the challenge. Raising the money to finance that team was another. The Perseverance won, and the Cirrus SR-20 was certified in October 1998. In 1999, when the first production SR-20 rolled out of the factory, Cirrus was now competing with the likes of Cessna. Both the Cirrus SR-20 and its higher performance models that followed, like the SR-22, revolutionized the small aircraft industry and won market share in double digits. Transformative technology included the use of composite materials and the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, or CAPS, the first FAA-certified aircraft to incorporate this innovation. CAPS has run on to save over 90 lives. In 2003, Cirrus introduced the first full-glass cockpit primary flight display, or PFD, offered standard in a small aircraft line. Within three years, all the major general aviation companies were following suit. As some discovered, and Cirrus expected, their attractive, innovative, high-performance products appealed to more than just experienced pilots seeking to fly more sophisticated planes. They had attracted new pilots as well. Not surprisingly, Cirrus design has become the world leader in its class of small aircraft. The Klappmeyer Brothers' spirit of exploration has gone on to transform and grow the general aviation industry, making it more safe, competitive, and innovative. Tonight, we proudly welcome Alan Klappmeyer and Dale Klappmeyer, each a unique innovator and visionary, into the National Aviation Hall of Fame. But 
I think of aviation, and maybe this is, a, this is the right analogy, as a sculpture that's still in the works. And it started out as a great big block of ram or something. The Wright brothers took a really big whack off that, that hunk of stone. And each of the honorees through the years have continued to narrow it down to some future picture. And, and we've had our part. We've done some refinement. I think we've added a lot of uh, new excitement to the industry and to the community. But obviously, there's still a whole future in front of us. New airplanes, new pilots, new things to be accomplished. And if anything, with the phrase, dumb enough to start and smart enough to finish, what I hope we've done is demonstrate, despite the combustions in our, in our aviation world, that in fact there is room for new advancement, there are room for new opportunities. And what you have to do is just get out there and try it, start it. Jump off the cliff, in, in, in addition to saying dumb enough to start, I would often say, uh, jump off the cliff and find out how deep the water was after you hit it. But, but this is a huge honor, and, and obviously thanks go to lots and lots of people. And, and rather than listing them all, um, where do we say that? You know, start listing them. The, the ones that really deserve the most credit are our parents, uh, Mary and Carol Thamler. I recently uh, read the book, actually listened to it on tape, Outliers by Mom and Bible. If you ever get a chance to listen to it. And it talks about how unique opportunities end up resulting in what appear to be individual successes. We were very fortunate to be born to parents at a time and in a situation where they encouraged us to do all this. It was briefly mentioned in the video that the building the glass air was part of starting Cirrus. The story that comes just before that was Dad saying, that's a great idea, start an airplane company. Because it's always best to go broke when you're young. <laughs> <laughs> and recover afterward. But, but having said that, obviously, hugely supportive, and, and again, whether it's family, friends, uh, people here tonight, people who couldn't make it here, it's uh, really been a team effort, and we very, very, very much appreciate this. Thank you.
and you've been rooting for our success. It's also the 6,000 customers that fly our airplanes. That's the Cirrus family, the people that our airplane has touched. That's what makes this so much fun. And there's a lot of fun yet to come. In the video, the video mentioned the champ. I found that champ sitting upside down in a tie-down in the northern Wisconsin. That became our first airplane project. But that champ has another special memory for me. Actually, ironically, 32 years ago today, my wife Patty and I went on our very first date. We went flying in that old champ. This honor is to you, Patty. And my two boys, Brian and Blake. And I've been incredibly blessed. I've been blessed with a wonderful family, Patty, Blake, Brian, Alan, my oldest brother, Ernie, is here. I've been blessed with tremendous friends, colleagues, blessed to be standing here today. And I'm very incredibly honored to be here. And I got to thank all of the people who have come before us, all the people who have been inducted into the Hall of Fame before us. It's the motivation, the drive, the determination of all of those people that have motivated us. This is an incredible honor. This is an honor and an evening that I will remember forever. Thank you very much.